What's up guys, Dustin McDangles back here with another franchise mode video with the San Jose Sharks as we look to get deeper into the season with the boys as we are actually doing pretty well, 24, 15, and 2. As you can see, we are actually, we slipped in the last episode as we were on top of the standings in the Pacific Division as we have sl slipped a bit down to the second uh, position for the Pacific Division, but things are looking good that we will indeed make the playoffs. And just taking a quick look at our lines, I know a lot of you want Evander Kane up on that first line, but LeBanc just sort of takes that down to the minus, takes that plus three away from the second line. Um, as he is 24 and Evander Kane is 28, but ah, it's so hard to decide. We might just roll with it for a month here with LeBanc on the first line. And if things aren't going well, we can look to trade LeBanc or just move him down to that second line as it will only get that plus one boost. But for now, we'll leave him on the first line to get that plus three boost to our second and see how things go. I did uh, put him up on the trading block to see what we can get. I did a couple, I, I looked at some trades off this video for him and nothing was really catching my eye worth taking. And I did remember that we actually don't have any first round picks for uh, this upcoming draft, which kind of sucks as it was all traded away in that Eric Carlson deal to the Ottawa Senators. Uh, but without further ado, guys, we're going to get into this month of January here. See how the boys do. I know Carlson is supposed to be back here around the second or third week of January back into the lineup. So hopefully that'll make things go pretty well for the boys as we will go ahead and simulate up to the 15th of January right now. And Evander Kane actually has been injured with a fractured ankle. So our second line is actually going to take a hit as we have to edit the lines now for missing Evander Kane, which kind of sucks because we are sort of low on men here. Um, we might be able to throw somebody in there. Uh, we're going to have to throw a centerman in to the lineup with Gramble and see how we are going to do this. He does give that plus one, but let's see if we can move Sorensen up. He gives the plus three. And we're going to have to take away from our third line, moving Gramble down to that fourth one. And Sorensen will at least give us that plus three on the um, second line, which is always nice to see as we'll go ahead and take a look here uh, and just sort of slot things back in. Carlson did get back into the lineup, which is good to see. Uh, but we need to sort of put this line up here back together. Let's see. Does that work? Yeah, that, oh no, Joe Thornton's on two lines here. Let's see. Who can I throw in there instead of Jumbo Joe? Um, let's take a look here. Left centerman. Let's go with Carlson, see if he's on well, any of them. He is not. So we'll get him on that fourth one with LeBanc. Uh, yeah, we'll go with that and see how that goes. Um, for the uh, changes here in the lineup, which is unfortunate to see, but it is what it is. Our power play one is plus five, so let's hope that can sort of carry us into the promised land as we get back into the simulation. Oh, Eric Carlson's out again, guys. Goodness gracious, we literally just put him back into the lineup, and now he is already back out of it. Things couldn't be going any worse for the San Jose Sharks as we got to substitute him into all lines, get Burnsy back up on that first line, and we actually don't have any plus ones. Is that true? Man, oh man, no plus ones at all. Actually, we get one right there with Ferraro and Finuf on the second line D pair, so let's hope that, that can keep it going here and try and get a win as we finally get one, and we will continue the simulation right now. So looking at the injuries here, we have... Oh man, we shouldn't have put Carlson back in too early as he actually has to have, have elbow surgery once again and he won't be back until April 7th, so un oh, that's such a bummer losing Carlson and Kane will be back in February, so in the next month, which is good to see and then uh, Simic will be back in January, at the end of January, so losing some two, of, two key players here for the Sharks does hurt a little bit so we might even need to make some moves here at the trade deadline to try and get things going as we are actually slipping in the standings here a bit. Still in that second position, but we are falling due to all these injuries. But let's go ahead and simulate through the rest of January and see where we fall in February. And as you can see here, guys, the month of January was a tough one. Losing a ton of games in the month was not good to see as we have sort of stayed in that second position 
in the Pacific Division about a game and a half back of the Coyotes for that top spot, but just the injury bug hasn't been going so well for the San Jose Sharks as we look to get some players back here in February, such as Evander Kane, but we will not be getting Carlson back until April, which is tough to see, so that's two months away. So hopefully we'll at least get him back for playoffs, but let's go ahead and get through half of this month of February and see where we are before we make any potential moves at the trade deadline on February 25th. So we have a trade here offered by the Minnesota Wild as they look to offer a third round, essentially swap for 2021 picks, and then a fifth round 2020 for this player right here, Jeffrey Veal. Uh, hasn't really done much in the AHL, so we will go ahead and do that. He's on his last year of his contract, so just essentially clearing up some space for next year and also getting some picks in that as well. So try and get an eventual first-round pick here uh, for next year's draft. And that is half of the month of February gone by, guys. Things haven't honestly gone great this month either, losing... Uh, four games out of the five that we have played so far in this month, and we are slipping down the standings in third position, so we are fighting to hold on to the um, playoff position here as we are getting into this month of March coming up here soon after the trade deadline. So I'll go ahead and simulate up to the Islanders game, and then we'll see if we need to make any trades moving forward. And here's an updated lineup sort of for you guys um the bank just really isn't fitting the roster so we were at we're actually going to go ahead and try and trade LeBanc uh for a third and or fourth rounder he is in his last year of his deal he is only 24 but he's just not really fitting the lineup as things just aren't working out with LeBanc and the Sharks as the lineup is sort of set without him in it even we're we're even missing Kane right now so with Kane in here in this lineup we'd be able to sort of slot him in there but I might try and go ahead and trade him for a right winger, potentially, just because once we get Kane back, that'll sort of bump down Goodrow Gud and Sorensen down the lineup. But um, let's go ahead and try and trade LeBanc right now. So here we are. We have a trade up here on the board for LeBanc for Zach Aston Reese. And Zach Aston Reese, though he is a dip in uh, overall, he does fit every single forward line that we have plus he is uh he has two years left on his contract and we might be able to get a third round pick out of this deal um so things are sort of pointing up for us because i don't think we'd be able to re-sign lebanc for next year um and he's just he doesn't really fit our lineup so we're gonna go ahead and try and see if we can get this trade through um they're not going to be able to get this so let's try and go for a lower draft pick let's go fourth round here for Zach Aston Reese and LeBanc and the trade is accepted so we will go ahead and throw Zach Aston Reese into the lineup here for the San Jose Sharks. So there you have it guys we have Zach Aston Reese on our fourth line for now uh, and then once uh, Kane is back into the lineup we will probably slot him in on our second line dropping Sorensen and Goodrow down the lineup moving Gramble out but it is nice to have Another solid player who can really work throughout the lineup. Works on the fourth and third and second line pretty well. Obviously not the first, which is not where he is meant to be. But we can go ahead and simulate some more uh, as we look to sort of hold on to our playoff position and maybe work towards getting a first round pick. So I'll simulate up to that last day before the deadline and we will go from there. So there you have it, guys. Kane is back into the lineup as things are looking pretty good for the San Jose Sharks as we are getting um, our players back from injury. So we are just waiting on Eric Carlson to get back into the lineup. But our top two lines are actually pretty stacked with that plus three overall and then the plus one for those guys on our top line. So hopefully they can turn it around in this simulation and we can start winning some games. So with Kane back into the lineup, we are able to go two and one with a sort of New York, New Jersey swing. Right before we get to the Philadelphia Flyers, we will get into some trade deadline magic as we will look to try and get a first round draft pick for next year. So it looks like the Philadelphia Flyers are willing to part ways with their uh, first overall pick we can also try and sneak in maybe a little fourth round pick there as well as they're looking to get rid of both 
see if we can do that and we are getting a first round pick for next year's draft guys as we just got that from the Philadelphia Flyers so I think the team is ready to go and we will go ahead and simulate up through February and we'll check back in with you at the end of February so there at the end of February we actually lost our last three games against Eastern Conference foes and we are falling into the wild card position here at 31 30 and 4 things are looking pretty dire here for the San Jose Sharks as we might even be out of the playoff position right now. We are indeed just out by two points to the Winnipeg Jets, so we got to hope for a big march here in order to get back into that playoff picture. So things were shaky at the start of March as we lost three in a row after beating the Toronto Maple Leafs, and then we went on a bit of a winning streak there, four games in a row against the Blackhawks, Blues, Stars, and Avalanche, all Central Division opponents. As we work back into the wild card spot, as we look to simulate through the rest of this month and see where the boys stand going into the month of April. Vander Kane has actually been injured and is out of the lineup, so we're going to have to go ahead and put Gramble back on that fourth line and hope the boys are able to come in clutch here at the end of the month of March. Vander Kane back into the lineup as they say he is ready to go. 85 overall, we will get him back up to that second line as well as uh, Dion Phaneuf has been cleared and we can put him back into the lineup which is good to see. Still waiting on Carlson to get back in the month of April but he might not come back if we miss out on the playoffs which is getting closer and closer to the day as we go ahead and take a look here at the standing. 76 points. We're out of a playoff position just by three points uh, as the Blackhawks are currently in the playoff picture right now but we are hoping we can try and sneak in there here with games against Pacific Division opponents here to close out this month of March. Running out of time here in this simulation, guys. It looks like we might be missing out on a playoff position as Carlson and Sorensen are back to enter the lineup. But 78 points. Uh, it's probably not going to be enough. We would need the Blackhawks to lose and us to win these last couple games. So we'll go ahead and put in Sorensen back into the lineup as he was injured for a little bit. And we'll throw Carlson back into the lineup as well to see if we can at least sneak in here into the playoffs, into these last couple spots. As Let's go ahead and take Simic out for Eric Carlson here. Throw him into the lineup. And let's hope and pray that we will be able to get anything going here as let's get this sort of moved around. Get Burns on that last line. We'll move him up with Ferraro on the second and hope that this will be enough uh, to get through here to the simulation. But I doubt it will be so as we'll go ahead. We'll actually go ahead and watch these. Um, man, oh, man. More, team, more players are... We'll have the head coach replace that player as we don't need to worry about it. We'll go ahead and simulate these games here in this sort of quick little simulation here as we'll go ahead and simulate through periods. Carlson scores on Kadobin, which is good to see. Able to get two more. Carlson in his first game back scores a goal and we are able to shut out the Dallas Stars as Timo Meyer able to slot one in there in the third period to win that game and Carlson has been injured with it. Oh my goodness. So for this guys, it's coming down to the wire as we need the Blackhawks to lose and we need to beat the Anaheim Ducks in order to get into the playoff picture here guys. Couldn't be any crazier coming down to the last day and the Ducks aren't the best of teams here in this situation. So let's hope we can find a way to sneak into the playoffs here um, I don't, yeah, the Blackhawks have one more game as well, so we'll go ahead and simulate this here in this, uh, sort of quick simulation. We'll go ahead and simulate period by period, down one nothing. sad to see. We tie the game, so we'll actually go ahead and watch a little bit of this third period here in the simulation as we will go ahead and speed things up. We actually get a goal on Gibson, so we're up. We score again, Sorensen, and we score once again. The boys really want to get into the playoff picture as we are up 5-2 to two off of goals from Hurdle, Sorensen, and Goodrow. Holy smokes, guys. The Sharks really want to get into the playoffs as Meyer scores for his, uh, I believe, second of the game. 
up six to two, and that should be it. Seven to two final as Sumela able to get one in on their backup goalie. They actually pulled Gibson and hope and pray that the Blackhawks at least tied or lost their game. And let's see, we'll have the head coach replace that player. Did we, uh, can we not? Oh, man, I just want to get through this so we can see if we actually made the playoffs. I don't know if we might have. And we just missed out as the Blackhawks won their last game, guys. So we just missed out on the playoffs by one point, which is sad to see. As I kind of want to check and look at Carlson's injury pending evaluation. So we have no idea what is actually wrong with Carlson. Oh man, that was a crazy season, guys. As we'll go ahead and simulate through here a little bit as the NHL regular season is over. We can go ahead. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Continue. Let's stop the simulation. Let's actually take a look at our AHL team. See how they're doing 30 and 30. And it looks like they will just miss out on the playoffs as well. Uh, 50 points for you could take you, Yuri take it Yuri, Yuri take Iken. No, no, and Daniel. We'll call him Daniel. Uh, we'll just call him Dan. Put up 50 points in 65 games. Uh, but looking at the playoffs here, um, we can go ahead and take a look at the playoff picture just to see the teams that actually did make the playoffs and who missed out. So in the uh, Western Conference looks like Minnesota is playing Nashville. The Stars are playing the Avalanche. The Golden Knights are playing the Calgary Flames. And the Phoenix Coyotes are playing the um, Chicago Blackhawks. In the Eastern Conference, we have the Flyers, Penguins, Capitals, Canadians, Panthers, Bruins, and Lightning. And the Buffalo Sabres actually make the playoffs, which is crazy to see. But we'll go ahead and simulate up to the draft review our season, see who's won the Stanley Cup, and then we will close out this video. So here are the draft lottery results, guys. St. Louis Blues actually get the first overall pick. The Ottawa Senators move up to the second one, and the New York Rangers actually move up into the third position, which is crazy to see. Our picks actually dropped the one that we traded to Ottawa all the way to 12, which is crazy to see, but uh, not really missing out too much because we all know that Lafreniere is going to be going first overall in this draft. And we will actually go ahead and look at the uh, retired players for this season. Marion Hosa, Zetterberg, Gabrick, Zdeno Charna actually retiring, UC Okunen, Derek Roy, Johan Franzen, uh, Clark MacArthur, and a few others. Marcel Gotch, to name a few. F4 retired players, which is kind of crazy to see. Charo, Zetterberg, Gabrick, and Muller will become scouts for their respective teams. Um, and we will actually go ahead and continue simming. I just want to get all the way up to the draft so we can take a look here at all of the stats uh, or anything, everything with the playoff tree. And it looks like the Tampa Bay Lightning won the Stanley Cup against the Colorado Avalanche 4-1 in the final as the Avalanche uh, made their way with the Blackhawks, who were the eighth seed, crazy to see make them to the make seeing them make it to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, they dismantled the Minnesota Wild and the Nashville Predators in their way to losing to the Tampa Bay Lightning, who took care of the Florida Panthers, Buffalo Sabers, and the Montreal Canadiens easily in their respective series. Um, awesome to see that Tampa Bay winning yet again another cup. We'll go ahead and look at the awards for this year. Obviously, the Lightning winning the Cup, the Capitals winning the President's Trophy, what's new there? Clarence Campbell, obviously, Colorado Avalanche, Western Conference Trophy, and the Prince of Wales goes to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, getting into the individual awards, the Art Ross went to Tyler Sagan, the Hart Memorial went to Tyler Sagan, the Norris Memorial went to Carlson, which he might be winning it this year for sure. Uh, Lady Bing also goes to Tyler Sagan. Man, Tyler Sagan had an absolutely unbelievable season. Calder went to Cap Capo Caco. Con Smythe goes to Vasilevsky. The Vesna went to Holpe. Williams Jenning also went to Holpe. The Bill Masterson Memorial Trophy went to uh, Sherratt for the Montreal Canadiens. Jack Adams Award went to the Buffalo Sabres head coach. Uh, the Selkie Trophy went to Kopitar. No surprise there as it's usually between him, Bergeron, and O'Reilly here. 
The Ted Lindsay also went to Tyler Sagan as he's picking up tons of hardware this year. And the Maurice Richard Trophy went to Tyler Sagan as well. So Sagan with an absolute banger of a year. We were unable to crack that 40 point mark, or 40 wins mark as we finished with 39. We'll actually go ahead and look at team stats here as Timo Meyer absolutely uh, leading the way for the boys with Couture, Burns, Thornton, Hurdle, and Kane rounding out the rest of those top players. Uh, nobody anywhere close to a point per game, which is sad to see, but we will have to make sure of that next year that we sort of sort that out, find some key players, and hopefully some of our players go up in overall as um, we will get into the next episode with re-signing and everything. But that's going to be it for today's episode, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. Uh, look forward to doing the next one with you on Thursday. And as always, stay dusty.